Hello. Okay. So um, I have been trying to put together a podcast for some time. <laughs> and this is pretty much it. Um, it's called Talking to Myself because that's what I do. <laughs> and um, maybe at some point I will have people come and, and talk here and then those ones will be titled something else. But for the most part, this is what's going to happen. And um, so I thought to start things off, we would talk about one of my favorite topics, which is Shakespeare. And of course, um, I mean, I remember a few years back, uh, Olivia Hussey had uh, been traveling all over. I think she was doing a tour actually uh, because she had released her memoirs. Uh, now, Olivia Hussey was in the 1968 uh, film Romeo and Juliet with uh, Leonard Whiting, and which is uh, quite honestly one of the best versions in my opinion the costuming i mean like the costumes are great the music is great it has the song a time for us which is one of my favorite songs uh leonard man um, leonard <laughs> henry mancini covered the song now there's a musician and every time I mention this guy's name, people think that I'm making up a name. No, his name really is Engelbert Humperdinck. I'm not even joking. That is his name. He's got a beautiful voice. And he covered the song, A Time for Us. And so, yeah, the, the movie is great. And the narrator for this movie is none other than Laurence Olivier, who, when he was younger, he was one of the best Shakespeare actors of the time. In fact, I've been trying to track down his, because it was filmed, his stage production of Hamlet. I've been trying to track it down and find it, and I find like little bits of it. <laughs> it's like, I want the whole thing, please. <laughs> please. That would be great. Now, Laurence Olivier is, is a legend to me. I, I think that he is, um, he was actually in, uh, yeah, now I'm blanking on it, Spartacus. And just, <laughs> which is, which is off from what you would expect. But you know, Derek Jacoby was in Gladiator, so which, to be honest, he played kind of the same role as Laurence Olivier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there was also, um, I think it was John Barrymore. So uh, Drew Barrymore's uh, relatives, I'm pretty sure it was John Barrymore and he was known for his uh, Shakespeare, I, I believe it was Hamlet that he played. Yeah, a lot of actors played Hamlet and they were very good at it. But I think that he was, more known for Hamlet and Laurence Olivier was known better for uh, just being a Shakespeare actor and he was very good at it. <laughs> and um, in fact, there's a video that I did. I know I need to redo it um, now that I have the technology <laughs> of um, Edwin Booth. And, uh, John Wilkes Booth's brother, and he was a Shakespeare actor. In fact, he opened up a school. Uh, I don't know if it's still going because it was in Manhattan, and he had 
a I, I'm pretty sure it was it's still there. Um, there was a, um, a statue uh, erected in because of his contribution to the arts. And yeah, after John Wilkes did what he did, uh, Edwin distanced himself from that. And but when John Wilkes died, Edwin um, claimed the body and buried it. Nobody knows where. So, um, but and from what I read, he said even uh, Edwin said this. He said, you know, even though he did something terrible and and just disgraceful he is my brother and he deserves a proper burial and um you know i i get that and um so so edwin th there is a picture i did find a picture cuz uh, qu quite honestly uh before John Wilkes did what he did. That entire family did uh, Shakespeare plays. There's one picture of them together. And I think it was uh, Julius Caesar that they did together. And, and then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, what happened happened. Uh, yeah, because they had a brother and they had a sister. And I think the sister's name was Asia or something like that. And I will, of course, correct myself in the description box because I, I can never remember the sister's name. But she was successful for quite a while. And then once she got married, uh, she decided to retire, especially once she became a mother. So, um, but, and like I said, the, the Barrymores, uh, John Barrymore was well known for his Shakespeare acting and uh, more Hamlet than anything else. And same with Edwin. Edwin was, he was notorious for his Hamlet. And, but, um, and Laurence Olivier was just, he was just a Shakespeare actor. He didn't really, he wasn't really known for a specific uh, character. And, um, but, all that because Lawrence Olivier was a narrator for the 1960. <laughs> oh, good heavens. But I do, I, I enjoy Shakespeare and, and even with, uh, with what I do, the, the colorizing, uh, photographs, I have come across a lot of Shakespeare actors and actresses. And um, from all over the world. So, uh, but when it comes to Olivia Hussey, I should get back to Olivia Hussey and Leonard Whiting. Uh, the thing about their movie in, in 1968 is they actually went on this tour. They did this tour, this promo tour and um i actually saw an interview with them and they were the, the interviewer for that one i don't know where they were but the interview was asking them the weirdest questions and it was just like what like uh i guess it, at one point uh now i don't remember how old olivia was at the time in 1968, I think she was still a teenager and she did pose nude for a magazine or something. And so the, the, the narrator kept wanting to ask her about that. And, and this was in the sixties, kept wanting to ask her about this. And Leonard was getting pretty protective and very protective. And I don't know if they were dating or not. And, um, 
because you know you hear rumors about that kind of stuff all the time how co-stars were dating and everything and sometimes it's true sometimes it's not and and everything but um to be honest it the, the questions that that person was asking was very inappropriate i mean so she posed nude i mean she shows up nude in the movie and <laughs> And everything so which was i remember watching that movie with my mother and i was in high school and no i think i was in middle school because i think i saw that before i entered high school because yeah it seems like and she had totally forgotten about that part it was all of a sudden she's like ah, turn away it's like it, it's a it's a flash you know <laughs> it's not it's very quick and, but I think one of my favorite parts in that movie is the the party scene. And of course, when they're singing A Time For Us, and it's not just because I like the, the song or anything, it's just the way that they handle the song alongside the, the party sequence and everything. Yeah, the costumes are great. I, I really like the, the costumes the costume design and everything and the setting the the sets that they have i don't remember if it's on location or not i should have checked that but um but yeah henry mancini i'm not sure if henry mancini oh gosh henry mancini has done he did so many movie soundtracks and um his most famous of course is pink panther and then he also did breakfast at tiffany's and um so it wouldn't surprise me if he's behind this one because there's often times where i'll be looking at a movie and all of a sudden it's like oh henry mancini is behind it <laughs> same with james horner who we said they lost too soon i'm i'm still upset that he's gone because <laughs> i miss hearing his music i, I really like him and uh, I think, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a fan of Romeo and Juliet as much as I in, enjoyed, like the, the, like I said, the costume design and and the sets and and all of that, the, the whole Renaissance uh, look to the 1968 version, and you know, Olivia Hussey and Leonard Whiting really. I mean, their chemistry was great in, in that film, but I don't like Romeo and Juliet. That's not my favorite. It seems to be everybody's favorite and all that. It, I, I just, I don't, I don't like it. And, um, but I, when I was in high school, in English class, this was a required reading was Romeo and Juliet. And that was you know freshman year this was when leonardo dicaprio's version came out <laughs> and my english teacher she was so in love with this version and and i mean like we still watched olivia hussey's version so she was showing, and, and it was almost, I think she she was trying to do like a, a compare and contrast kind of a thing, you know, what, watching the modern version next to a more Renaissance, you know, like a time period type. And, but like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Leo's version just was, the, the thing about Romeo and Juliet is that it's, it's a renaissance version of Hatfield and McCoy. <laughs> There's no other way to explain it. I mean, you got two families who are tearing each other apart. And, and then you have these two kids who, you know, rebel and, and are in. And then you have, <laughs> this part threw me. I remember sitting in class and this part came up and I'm like, what the hell is going on? John Leguizamo comes in and 
he just busts out all of these guns. <laughs> like, what? What? What are? What are these? What are guns having to do? Guns weren't invented yet. Not that. I, no, they didn't work. It, what? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, I'll have to check that. And uh, <laughs> oh, and that fish tank scene. That was like the big seller of the movie. Was that stupid fish tank thing? That and and Leo in the in that suit of armor and her in that angel outfit. I remember there were so many couples who dressed up like that. And it was like, they would have like the couple tolos and yeah, these couple dances and they would have the dress up thing. And yeah, they did that for a couple years. And it was so annoying <laughs> for me anyway, cause I just, I, I hated this movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I like, because they did, they just, uh, they spent way too much time staring at each other through this fish tank. And I'm sure even the fish were like, move on, get out of here. <laughs> They're staring at us. What do they want? Oh my gosh. And I remember at one point our teacher was like, well, you know, this is the only modern version of the story. This is the only modern take of Romeo and Juliet. And we're like, uh, there's West Side Story. And she's like, that's not modern. We're like, lady, you are so fired <laughs> from your job. And you don't. How? What? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> we couldn't believe what she was saying. <laughs> it's it's great that she liked the movie. N nothing wrong with that. And like my brother had her six years later, and and he was complaining about that. And I said, you mean she still likes that? And he's like, yeah, she's obsessed with it. And I was like, oh, gosh, let me tell you about when it first came out. Because <laughs> you think uh, you think you have it bad. <laughs> and <laughs> like, you, you got to understand, I, I was not a fan of Leo DiCaprio when I was in high school. I just I could not stand the guy because it was like uh basketball diaries i was i think that came out a year before this movie there was this movie and then right after that titanic came out and of course titanic just ah oh, it was <laughs> i've said what i need to about that movie but um like i just I have more respect for Leo now. I mean, <laughs> there's quite a few of his movies that I really like. I mean, Catch Me If You Can, I love. I love Catch Me If You Can. But uh, to this day, when it comes to his version of Romeo and Juliet, it, when he's crying, it's obvious fake crying. And, and I remember watching that and I'm like, is he dry heaving? What is he doing? What is he trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's in pain. What is he? <laughs> this is painful to watch. What is happening right now? <laughs> I, <laughs> and and the ending was just off. And uh, like there was just so much that I just it, uh, the the ending was horrible. West Side Story did so much better with the ending, you know, and and like I, I also remember the monk when they, when they showed the monk and he's got like that huge tattoo on his back of a cr I'm like I'm done I'm just, I'm so over this movie you know <laughs> it's just what what is this thing. 
<laughs> yeah, I I remember when my teacher she she loved that movie. She absolutely loved it, and um, I mean, like I can appreciate her because with with like modern versions compared to like the versions that stick to um time period and everything i could appreciate that if that's what she was going for and and all that but man <laughs> i wish she would have gone with west side story <laughs> for her to tell us that that's that's not romeo and juliet that's not... <laughs> really <laughs> yes it is But here, here's the thing. Okay, so I said that I, I really don't like Romeo and Juliet. It just seems like everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's one of the best Shakespeare out there. And <laughs> are, really? <laughs> you know, he wrote sonnets too, right? If you think this is the best love thing that he ever made, we got problems because he wrote sonnets. I mean, like one one of the best ones he ever did is like, shall I compare thee to a summer's day that art more lovely and more temperate, where winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's least hath least hath all due short a date. I can't believe I still remember that. <laughs> I, I, he wrote uh, like. I don't know, like 500, son I don't remember the exact number, but it's it's in the hundreds, hundreds of sonnets. And you think this is the best that he did? No, L let me tell you something about Romeo and Juliet, okay? Romeo and Juliet is just two horny, rebellious teenagers. <laughs> Their families are fighting and <laughs> Romeo sees her and he's like, I'm I'm gonna tap that tonight. You know, <laughs> that's what he's doing. And uh, you know, when when Shakespeare says two star cross lovers, I don't think he means in love. That you know, the these two lovers they cross and their their paths cross and they are just in it's love at first sight. No. Nah, he means a one night stand. <laughs> Fight me on that. <laughs> I mean, Romeo's hormones are raging so much. The uh, good lord, I mean the 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 guy just slept with the the daughter of his enemies and then he just goes on a murdering spree. This is a problem. <laughs> Yeah, this is we got issues, and um, <laughs> we got massive issues on that way. Hey, look, if I had to choose between Romeo and Hamlet, I would choose Hamlet over because let, let me tell you something. He he's a genius. I mean, Romeo is just out. Uh, thinking with the wrong head and then he goes on a murdering rampage how is that romantic i don't understand that i just don't get it he, meanwhile hamlet is, is just a genius because he's convinced everyone that he's crazy out of his brain his mom keeps telling him you know she's like you need to think more clearly on certain things <laughs> you know he's just da, 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 da. well then when she leaves, you know, when they leave the room, he has like these philosophical speeches. He just goes off on these speeches that are like highly intelligent and everything. And then when people come back in, he <laughs> he's like derp derp derp. <laughs> so everyone thinks that he's just dumb as dirt when he's not. And I mean, this is a guy that he's mourning the loss of his dad he's trying to figure out how he's going to expose his uncle now you also have to realize that shakespeare 
did a lot of this in his plays where he did a play within a play. Now, it seems like the there were a few Greek plays that did the same thing. So Shakespeare was not the first one to do that, but he did it quite a bit. So, um, yeah, for the longest time, he was the one that was credited as the first, and then it was found out that ancient plays did the same thing. And um, I learned that in my dramatic lit class. So <laughs> I learned things. I pay attention. But so, I mean, like, here he is. He's wandering around. He's being haunted by his dad's ghost. His dad's ghost is trying to help him out, trying to figure out how to expose his uncle. And <laughs> meanwhile, his mom decided to marry the uncle which what what is the, the mom even <laughs> i i feel so bad for hamlet and then okay so with all this going on then you have ophelia okay he absolutely you, you actually watch the play and everything and you realize that he absolutely loves ophelia okay but the problem is is that Ophelia is all about, she, she keeps saying, pay attention to me. Okay, it's all about me now. That could, that would just be annoying. Okay, she needs to calm down her lady parts. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, this poor guy is, is in mourning. He can't just move on. With, with, what's, what's up with that? And, uh, oh my gosh. So, <laughs> oh, geez. And, and, and I love how, how one person, I was in a dis, uh, this like online discussion forum or whatever for, and, and this person says, well, yeah, but in, in Hamlet, it was a tragedy. And I'm like, you do understand how Shakespeare works, right? Because Romeo and Juliet is also a tragedy. See, you, you slap on tragedy, everybody dies. I mean, <laughs> Shakespeare pretty much spoils it for you. Once you put tragedy on, everybody dies. You, there's just, that's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like Titanic. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> the boat sinks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I I don't know what else to tell you on that one, and <laughs> oh my gosh, you know there are certain plays that they they kind of overkill on them, and you know I again I was saying that there are quite a few of these actors and, and actresses from the Edwardian and, and Victorian era that I've restored and colorized and I've, I've gotten to know their career. And like uh, one of them, uh, her name was Constance, I think it's pronounced Collier or Collier. And um, I'll, I'll put her information in the description box. And there are photos of her in the play Anthony and Cleopatra and I feel like that one has just kind of it's like you don't see it at least around here you don't see it ever <laughs> around here they keep wanting to do Midsummer Night's Dream as you like it okay we we get it and there was one very rare occasion where they put like this fun little twist on Merchant of Venice. My brother was in it and it was a lot of fun. Well, then it was like, okay, we did that. Now we're exhausted from that. We're not going to do it anymore. Now let's go back to As You Like It. And it's like, stop. <laughs> and I mean, like Midsummer Night's Dream is fun, but not when you see it over and 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 over again. And I mean, <laughs> It, it, it's funny, it's silly, but not when that's the only play that you do. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> like when I was in high school, uh, it, it seems like my senior year maybe it was my junior year and then my senior year is when the movie came out and it was the midsummer night's dream with uh christian bale i still haven't seen it i know shocking <laughs> seems like uh kevin klein if you don't know who kevin klein is uh he is the voice of tulio in uh road to el dorado and uh <laughs> Kenneth Branagh, actually Kenneth Branagh is in a whole bunch of Shakespeare movies, and uh, he's in a version of Hamlet. He uh, did, um, I think, a version of As You Like It, <laughs> and Henry V, and I think that's a version with Christian Bale. Christian Bale played a stable boy. Jeez, how many movies did they do together? Because they also did Swing Kids, but it seems like there's at least two shakespeare movies that they did together and um but anyway and but yeah K kenneth Branagh is known for his shakespeare work as well so it doesn't surprise me <laughs> but no he wasn't in uh midsummer night stream but uh kevin klein was christian bale i think calista flockhart was too if i remember correctly like i said but this is what it was another one that was like a modern a kind of a modern take to it and um and everything so but um i i just haven't seen it and and it's funny to me that there's there's people that still don't know that 10 things i hate about you is just taming of the shrew because it is <laughs> <laughs> You've been cultured. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Oh. But, um, I mean, I just, and, and I did look because, again, I, I critiqued, uh, uh, what was it? The, the sound version for, Taming of the Shrew with uh, Douglas Fairbanks and uh, Mary Pickford. And then, of course, I did the video about Shakespeare in the silent film era when there was an explosion. So I, I looked for Romeo and Juliet silent films, and I don't know if I mentioned this in that particular video, and there were two silent films for Romeo and Juliet. They're both lost, and Theta Bear is in one. And it's like, no, I would have loved to see that. So, oh, it seems like a lot of Theta Bear's films are gone. It's just—it's so sad. One of the most famous name. Well, it's the same thing with a uh, Clara Bow. There's a lot of her movies that are gone as well, and it's just very frustrating but um <laughs> I, I i'm just very sad but <laughs> there was a, another gal that i restored and colorized she had kind of she well she had a sad story really she she was a stage at, she started when she was really young and um i wish uh, mary anderson i think was her name I'm, i know it's mary and i think her last name was anderson and the problem is is that with all the touring that she did and everything by the time she hit 30 years old she had a breakdown on stage and of course everybody held it against her and everything it's like i <laughs> but she had been touring non-stop so she was she it's not like she had like a um a violent breakdown or anything like that she was just exhausted she she had a breakdown from exhaustion and so she didn't return to the stage the only there was only one time that she did and it was for a charity 
something or other. And she she did a couple silent films, but for the most part, she she got married, she moved to Italy, and she hosted several parties and everything. Her husband was a um so I guess it isn't too tragic, really. She, um, her husband was a um, race car driver, or he was into sports cars and everything. So, so actually, she, she, but the, the sad part is, is that she, she was into acting. She, she loved acting and everything, and then because of that, they basically, you know, the people. In in those days, if you had a breakdown or something, or you collapsed or whatever, it was considered a scandalous thing, and and everything. So, but he, but uh, like I said, she she returned for for charity, and but for the most part, yeah, she she uh, when she got married. She she hosted fancy parties. I think it also said that she uh, she did like some uh, journalism stuff or like wrote articles for the magazine, the local magazine or something like that. Yeah, she did some writing uh, on off the side, but yeah. Um, and. There was a there was another instance where I, I read that a this actress um, started on stage, and then she tried to to do this uh, routine like in vaudeville. So she she wasn't getting the notoriety she thought she deserved, and um, You know, like, I mean, she, she wasn't like the Barrymores or anything, but she thought that she was of that stature or whatever you want to call it. So, like, in the first year, here she is, she's thinking that she deserves. And so she went over to, like, the vaudeville stage, and she was trying to do these routines where she would do different things with uh, Shakespeare. Uh, Cite. So she would take different parts of Shakespeare and recite them. Um, she tried singing them. She would try to do a, a tap dance and recite at the same time. I, I mean, it it seems like people would have been interested in that, but they really weren't. I mean. <laughs> I, I was reading what she was doing and it was like, this is boring. <laughs> and I've, I've seen a lot of these vaudeville acts that took off and I'm like, I would have been bored out of my skull. There, there was, uh, you know, like a uh, Windsor McKay would actually sit there and paint. There were other times where he, there, there was a another time where he would, uh, but he was animated enough that he, you know, you see him in those uh, little films that he did, where he's moving around enough and and all this, so he he was able to capture the audience. So I can get where he he was able to, but the idea of just sitting there and and painting there and. <laughs> I have heard about some of the stuff that Buster Keaton's parents did, and it's like, uh, how did you get away with that? That's a little scary. <laughs> it's very scary indeed. Buster actually did a version of Hamlet. I've been actually, I have been trying to find that 
I haven't been able to find it yet. That doesn't mean it's floating around somewhere on the internet. But um, yeah, he did a, a, a Hamlet, and um, which I would like to to watch. And uh, and then of course one of my favorites is uh, James Cagney. And James Cagney was in a version of um, Midsummer Night's Dream, which, quite honestly, uh, that one, even for being in black and white, it's it's visually pleasing. Really, I mean, you know that there's like this comedy thing going on and everything else, but there are certain points where it's just there's like a a certain there's like at one point where there's like this sparkly effect and it, it it's really nice i mean like I, I don't know how to explain it i mean if you can find clips of this film like i said it it is in black and white you you don't really but um i enjoy it <laughs> I enjoy it very much. And not just because James, James Cagney's in it. I don't remember who it. I think Mickey Rooney is in it too. I think he plays Puck. I don't remember. But James Cagney plays Bottom. It's, it's funny to me that he plays Bottom because this guy that constantly played gangster films and then he, he gets that part. <laughs> I think that's hilarious to me. Oh my gosh. Oh man, but I haven't really talked about Shakespeare himself, and uh, I should because he's the one that wrote all of these. And I haven't really talked about his history ones either. You know, like Richard the Third and all those, which got him into so much trouble. Yeah, he and uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, who was the Virgin Queen, they butted heads so much. <laughs> He is, I mean, he really knew how to get under her skin, you know, like, a, a lot of those that, you know, like Henry V and, and all of those were basically trash talking her, her family. And this is, this is what I have to say is if her sister Mary were still on the throne and went to these plays, she would have taken care of Shakespeare, uh, like within seeing the first play. I mean, Because, I mean, it just, because of the fact that here she, she's, she's Bloody Mary. She was getting rid of people right and left. Now, granted, I do have sympathy for Mary because of the fact that her, her dad abandoned her because he was thinking with the wrong head. <laughs> Anne Boleyn physically assaulted her and told others to do the same. Originally, it was just going to be she, she would seek revenge on the individual who signed the paper saying that she was a bastard child. And it just spiraled. And so, yeah, if William Shakespeare had been writing these plays when Mary was on the throne, he he would, <laughs> we wouldn't have all of these plays, all these sonnets, uh, all the poetry and everything else. He, I, yeah, he, it just, once he made the play about one of the family members, that would have been it, you know, and because, <laughs> Yeah, that was that was just it. 
when it came to Elizabeth, though, she she was annoyed, but she. <laughs> she could she could at least be reasonable about it she was like well it's it's not like he i mean this is just art is what it is it's it's a play i, I can't really and um but and i mean <laughs> And I I do wish that people would look more at the sonnets, you know, like like the one that I talked about. And I remember in I don't I think it was creative writing class. And of course, in creative writing class, we had to uh, write different styles of poetry. Oh my gosh, the the type of poetry where you write just one line is so difficult. You know, at least because there's a where it's just one stanza. I mean, just no, not a stanza. It's just one line. That's it. There is poetry where it's just and I, I forget what it's called. And there is also poetry where it's just two lines and at least the kind where it's just two lines oh, excuse me I'm not tired but um the poetry where it's two lines you at least have something to work with the one line you you don't what is that called let me look at that real quick poetry well, yeah, one line poetry. What is that called? But what is it called? Is it? No, it's Mono stitch, that's what it's called. They kept showing me stanza. I'm like, I know that's not correct, but yeah, it's called a mono stitch. And then the two lines is called a couplet. Man, I'm <laughs> so rusty on this. But um, but anyway, like I was saying, is in creative writing class we had to learn all of we had to write all of these and the mono stitch was the hardest because again you you don't have anything else to work with at least with a couplet you have something else to work with well then when we got to the sonnets <laughs> we got like this packet that was all of shakespeare's sonnets now the other thing to understand is that shakespeare was not the only one to write sonnets no, he was he was not the only one. However, his are the most famous. I believe uh, Dante also uh, uh, wrote sonnets. I mean, there, there's sonnets from all over. The, there's uh, sonnets from India. There's uh, <laughs> there's Viking sonnets for gosh sakes, and and everything. So, yeah, no, he's not the only one to write sonnets, but. Like I said, his are the ones that we remember the most. Uh, yeah, so I just, I remember getting this packet. <laughs> I think I still have the sonnet that I wrote, but yeah, it, it was, I was going through a horrible, horrible time and mine is pretty depressing. So <laughs> I don't think it will see the light of day. <laughs> because some things don't need to be remembered. But anyway, um, just, <laughs> I think it's funny that now people always fixate on the fact that he, uh, that 
that Shakespeare, once they found out, it's like, oh yeah, he, he smoked cannabis or, you know, he, he was a smoker or whatever. He's a stoner, all this. And it's like, <laughs> he's not the first guys. You do know that the Oracle and, and the monks, you know, like the, the priests, ancient priests and all that, the way that they talked to the gods, they took hallucinogens. <laughs> <laughs> come on come on let's keep up <laughs> and, and plus it kind of makes more sense when you think about it you know the idea that he's uh, that he smokes and all that because <laughs> the i mean the reason i say that is because of the fact that he was so chill about going up against the queen. I mean, this is a, a monarch that people adored. And, and he just was like, oh, well, look what I can do. <laughs> Let me ruffle her feathers a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of makes sense that he would. <laughs> Oh, good heavens. I think that's one of the reasons I, I like him so much. Is <laughs> just, he doesn't give a shit at all. Oh, good heavens. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. I remember... Uh, Oh, what class was that? Was that an English class? It was in high school. And I don't remember if it was an English class or if it was the Shakespeare class I was taking. Might have been the English class. And I remember we were talking about Hamlet. I mean, uh, uh, Shakespeare. And we were talking about his family. And <laughs> the teacher kept, <laughs> kept having to correct all of us dumbass kids because he was like okay he married Anne Hathaway and he had these kids uh Susanna and then he had twins and the the one was named Hamnet and all of us were like no you mean Hamlet and that's why he wrote the play and she's like no 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 Hamnet with an n and we're like, no, <laughs> you're saying it wrong. She's like, no, you're saying it wrong. Finally, she gave up. <laughs> and and the other kid's name is Judith, by the way. And um, I just, <laughs> and of course, this was before. I mean, like the, the internet was brand new, and of course. Uh, we still had physical, because uh, we're, I'm as old as the hills, we had physical um, encyclopedias in the library, and so after that, we went to the library, and we actually looked, and we're like, oh, son of a gun, she was right, <laughs> Sam Nett, well, what do we know, <laughs> thinking we're right, and we're not. <laughs> Oh, man. Sometimes I miss having physical copies, uh, you know, physical encyclopedias. I wish we hadn't gotten rid of ours because every once in a while it's like I'll be, you know, the Internet will go down and it's like I'm still looking something up. <laughs> Gosh darn it. This isn't cool, man. <laughs> and, you know, and and I think I'll um, close up on on this point is, well, as I said earlier, with the time period versus the modern, I enjoy those to a point. It 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 depends on how they do it. You know, like uh, Ten Things I Hate About You, I actually like. I I did the the silent or the talky actually. It's it's with uh mary pickford and and douglas fairbanks and so and, and they're 
version is of, of Taming of the Shrew. They're in time period costume and, and everything. So if you were to, to watch that and compare it to 10 Things I Hate About You, much like what this would be with uh, Olivia Hussey and Leonard Whiting's version of Romeo and Juliet next to Leo's version of Romeo and Juliet. And, you know, I mean, the, the fun part about it is to be as creative as can be. And that, that that's how I see it anyway. And <laughs> the Lion King is Hamlet. I mean, we, we all know this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I mean. I mean, again, it, I mean, how, how else? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if Shakespeare realized that <laughs> Sir Elton John would be singing about the great circle of life. <laughs> oh, good heavens. But, uh, you know, again, I mean, <laughs> Oh, but I do. I I like these. Uh, I, I I like them to a point. There have been those ones that I think are just terrible, and <laughs> and and it's not just with Shakespeare; it's with others as well. Anyway, I'm going to close up here. <laughs>